Hey everyone, so this is Rosewood Season 2, Episode 14. Excuse me, um, it's called White Matter and the Ways Back. Um, and the episode, um, starts off with a guy in his apartment chopping up meat. Um, and then, you know, making a smoothie or something like that. Then you see him going downstairs to get the mail, and on the way back up, somehow he manages to wind up dead. But nobody's in the elevator with him. Hornstock at, at or at the station. Hornstock is acting weird. Um, it says he's fine when Via, you know, asks him about him. Um, Slay then gives Via a case, even though it's Hornstock's turn to take um, the next to fill the case. Um, and Slay, you know, notices that Hornstock is acting weird as well. Um, at the crime scene, the building owner. For, named for, uh, either the building owner or manager or both, named um, for what for well, for well, um, tells him of the thumbprint scanner he has installed into all the buildings that he um, owns, <clears throat> which means only the tenants and I think even some of the people that the tenants uh, bring in as guests can come up and go or come and go as the police. Via asks for the footage of the camera um, that is also installed. By the thumbprint scanner, and <clears throat> for well, tells her that it might take a while since the footage goes to Mumbai. Um, and as they head inside, a voice says that she was right on it, and she introduces herself as Hall- as Hollow, the concierge operator. Um, at the elevator, Rosewood, you know, asks to speak with the tenant who found the Vic, whose name is Bobby Huff. Um, but he is told Hala found out Hala found out that he hadn't left the building in a few days. Um, and we're also told that the building is mostly unoccupied except for Bobby. He's the only one that lives in the building. Um, um, and it's because most of the tenants live abroad and uh, build, uh, buy real estate, whether it's apartments, houses, whatever. Um, in the U.S., but um, but uh, he, he didn't move in. Um, Rosie then thinks the killer could have come in on an, any unoccupied floor, but Farwell says uh, that can't be right because the elevator only goes is only broken to stop on uh, occupied floors, which would only be Huff's floor um, and the lobby. Um, the only way through the emergency hatch on the elevator when Bia brings up is through a key fob and a code. So that seems out. Um, Rosie then says, well, he can't really believe that anyone couldn't have gotten in because either someone did or a ghost killed him. <clears throat> he and Via then check out Bobby's apartment and find the meat he was chopping up earlier. Um, Rosie thinks that the, he had uh, money to burn, but Via tells him that she noticed the um, overdue notices next to his body. Um, then Rosie not- uh, notices that he and Bobby both like the old TV show The Ways Back. Obviously, that's a fictional show inside a fictional show. So, <clears throat> anyway, um, they hear a noise and then find a wolf in one of the closed rooms. Um, <clears throat> Back at the lab, they find out that Bobby died because of blunt force trauma to the back of the head, which broke his neck and killed him almost instantly. And Pippi um, sees some bites on his neck, um, which are from a Rocky Mountain wood tick, and um, the wolf was covered in them. Um, there's also an indentation on Bobby's um, Bobby that's made from a ring. So they go to the jewelry store that Bobby got it from, um, which is where Rosie was was not too long ago with Tanya. Um, and he was there to look at rings and stuff with her. The store is owned by Eduardo, um, and the ring was designed by an, uh, an, a guy named Alan Rast. Alan um, makes his way in after being called by Eduardo. Um, but when Via flashes her badge, he runs, and runs straight into the, um, glass, glass door. (laughs) Um, so they bring Alan in. He says he didn't kill Bobby, um, 
and then his friends Micah Holmes and Rick Wu come in. Um, Bobby's father created the Ways Back, um, which bought, uh, which uh, Micah starred in. Um, Bobby, Rick, Alan, and Micah are all the uh, best of friends, and they have dinner on Friday nights, but Bobby didn't show up. Back at the lab, Donna calls a meeting, um, and she's concerned about the financials. Um, she doesn't want to keep using the c- uh, company credit card for personal expenses, and she doesn't. She wants to sell equipment that they don't use on a daily basis for um, all the cases that, cases that they uh, get brought in on. Um, before they can go any further about that, um, <clears throat> test results come in. And there are high levels of opiates in the body system. It looks like long-term usage. Um, and this annoys Donna, clearly, um, by the way she exits. Uh, which I guess I can understand. I can see where she's coming from. Because she, she wants to make sure that the, the, um, that the lab is alright. Not, not that, uh, not that hard to understand. Um, anyway, so back at the station, Bea is still confused as to why Hornstock is so cheerful. Happy is not, I guess you could say happy, but you kind of also have to say cheerful and or chipper, because he's really, really chipper. <laughs> um, and Rosie's like, well, maybe he's just changed. Maybe my rosy tenacity has rubbed off on him. Um. But Via doesn't, Via doesn't buy it. She doesn't buy it at all whatsoever. Um, anyway, so they then look at video footage. Um, and don't really see much. They only see him checking the, she see Bobby checking the mail. So Via thinks, uh, someone tampered with the footage. So they go into the building and Hala says nothing passed her. Um, and Via thinks the killer never left. And this is all the way, this is on the way inside. For well, um, says there's no way Kill got in since only the, tw- uh, only the 20th floor is the one that can be accessed. Um, but inside the elevator, Via presses all the buttons and uh, all the other buttons don't work except uh, floor 11 and 20. So, um, Pharrell says, well, it's a glitch, um, but clearly that's not the case because in the apartment, uh, there's a woman, uh, there's a television on, television is on, and it's, I think it's on a news station or something like that, and, um, it's clear that it's not just a glitch, so, um, inside the room we also see a woman from, I would assume, Eastern Europe or... Yeah, I would assume Eastern Europe um, is on the couch and calls Pharrell by his first name. <laughs> Clearly, um, the woman's name is Alina, and she had just come into the U.S. Uh, she says she ran into Bobby by accident <clears throat> a while back, um, and as you know, Rosie and V are talking to Alina, Pharrell, you know, runs. And he goes back to his office and starts shredding documents. Um, so at, at the station, Via <clears throat> uh, says Bobby was probably blackmailing for well, um, which means he had means, motive, and opportunity. Uh, they didn't listen on in on inter- or at least late in, uh, um, listens on interrogation. Um, Hornstyle comes in. It's like, hey, why don't we, why don't I ask you a few questions? And you ask them, and then for a while it's like, no, I want lawyer. I want a lawyer. All of them. All of the lawyers. Um, <clears throat> and Hornstock doesn't even try to, um, <clears throat> doesn't even try to, um, go any further. He just leaves. And sleep. Like, <laughs> at, uh, after that sleep, like, you know, it's like, well, what the fuck's going on? You're not yourself. But, again, Hornstock just shuts that down. Micah then comes in and reveals Bobby told him, uh, Ron, well, either he, f- I think he said that he either f- uh, found out a while back that, 
uh, Bobby had relapsed, or he that's he that's when uh, or Bobby had called him that night um, and told him he had relapsed or something like that. Um, but basically. Michael then is like, well, after my show got canceled, the the first uh, got canceled all those years back. Me and Bobby got hooked on drugs for about ten years, and one night when they were at a party, they realized they didn't recognize anyone at that party, so they decided to sober up and have been clean ever since. And then we're also told that Michael's dad robbed him blind, like uh, presumably of all the money he made on the show. And then Bobby um, was the one with all, all the money given to him by his dad. Donna then wants to get rid of the things in storage, which are at back at the lab. Um, <clears throat> because the stuff in the storage closets um, is collecting dust. So, um, Rosie then is, um, Rosie is then, um, What's the word? Uh, he has this idea to use the 3D printer that was in storage to figure out what killed Bobby, and it looks like the weapon is 8 inches in diameter, 15 to 75 pounds, and made of hardwood or metal. Um, <clears throat> and there's this picture displayed upon the screen at the lab of um, the four guys standing in front of a mantelpiece with a, an award um, on it, and that wasn't there at the um, apartment, so <clears throat> or that wasn't there at the house or whatever. Um, so they figure that's the murder weapon. The and Rose then goes to Mike go to Michael's place and they find him having a physical argument with Alan and calling him a traitor. Um, <clears throat> at the station, we find out Bobby left a voicemail that wasn't too flattering for the three three of them, but turns out the fight was about um, the ways back having a reboot. Um, the producer had contacted Micah a few months back and they were all upset about the fact that Micah hadn't told them about it and he was just trying to find the right time to tell them. Um, <clears throat> Lucy then comes in and says that they don't know what happened to Bobby because they weren't there when it happened um, because they were, you know, photographed I guess across town or something uh, when the uh, Bobby was killed. So then comes in and says the word Micah one was stole from his, stolen from his house, probably used to kill Bobby and then sold to Cat Lady using a dummy account. Um, we never actually find out who did that and why. Um, I think, I guess it was assumed that it was Bobby to pay for stuff or something. I don't know. Anyway. But, um, the, the award is taken back to the lab and it comes to find come, come to find out that it's not actually the murder weapon. Um, so Rose is like, well, y'all assumed someone sneaked into the elevator and struck him. Um, maybe, and he pretty much implies that Bobby just, you know, fell. Um, but Minchie says that given the space in the elevator, Bobby couldn't have done it to himself. Um, with, uh, by accident. Um, at the elevator, Rosie figured out that Bobby was alone and someone took control of the elevator to rocket him up to, tw uh, to the 20th floor. Um, when the uh, elevator finally stopped, suddenly uh, Bobby's momentum flung him upwards uh, and separated his neck from his spine. They then arrest Rick because he's pretty good with computers and they figure someone remotely hacked into it. Um, Rick then asks why he would and we come to find out that Bobby was planning on selling the secrets to a publisher because his father had cut him off and supporting them wasn't cheap. But Rick says it's not true. After talking to Pippi, Rosie realizes that Rick hasn't changed much in 20 years so he goes to talk to Rick in jail um, and he explains how the friends he had before getting sick and being put into the hospital um, were his best friends. But once he got sick and ended up in the hospital, they didn't come to visit him once he was in the hospital. Um, and then 
years later, he was told by his friends that the reason they come to see him was because they didn't want to see him like that. And Rosie realized that he, uh, his friends weren't the ones that changed. He had. Um, <clears throat> Rick then explains that Micah couldn't see what the ways back did to Bobby. Um, Bobby's father, I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but Bobby's father is the one that um, created the show and I think produced it. Um, and when Bobby wanted to star in the show, or whether as an extra or um, recurrent character or whatever, his father wouldn't allow him to be in the show, even as an extra. And then, um, so Bobby didn't say anything about it and just supported Micah. Um, Rick says that if Bobby hadn't died, the reboot would have ended him. Um, which I could see, because I could see how that could happen. I mean, if your father's not even willing to let you be an extra in a show that he's he created and, and started, that would fucking suck. That would suck major ass and I would understand why he I mean not saying that it totally excuses his taking drugs but I can see why it would lead him to even think about taking it anyway so um back at the building and as well as he looks at the maintenance of the elevator he is like she, he's expressing the horn stock um she doesn't know why, what was the, what was wrong with the old horn style before Rosie comes down. He explains the way the elevator could have accelerated, only way the elevator could have accelerated that quickly is if someone had interfered with the velocity transducer. And Ro- Rosie first explains he originally thought Rick had, uh, or they all had originally thought that Rick had hacked into the um, access control pan- system, but it, but the whole system runs on a separate network so someone had to manually um adjust it um and he was like how the fuck do you know this <laughs> and he was, or uh, Rosie's explaining like well I I mean you have to keep up with the times and, who, and it's like who do you think installed all of the uh tablets at the lab <laughs> hello it was me anyway <laughs> Um, on the way out, Hala says she almost thinks Rosie's a tenant with how much she, how much she's around. Before they leave, Hala coughs, Hala coughs, um, and Rosie's like, well, hope you get better, um, and all that. And, um, Rosie then, you know, explains to them that whoever went around inside would have had fiberglass in their nostrils, and Rick didn't have any in his, so he's innocent. And come to find out, it was Hala... Uh, or a or better known as Claudine, which is Pharrell's assistant. Um, she was robbing the tenants blind and went in when they weren't home. Um, she uh, so she would go into. She decided to go into Bobby's apartment and um, when he wasn't home, but it turns out he was. Um, and Bobby was planning on telling Pharrell about it. Um, so they arrest her. Thea then tells Rosie at once they after they you know rest her and go back to the station that um Farwell is covering Claudine's uh legal fees. Micah then comes in and tells Rosie and Via that he, Rick, and Alan are going to LA for the reading of the reboot, um, and feels like um uh Bobby will be with them in spirit at least. Um that felt like a very bittersweet moment to me. Even though I wasn't that totally invested in this episode, that felt like a very bittersweet episode. Um, Donna, uh, uh, when, when Pippi and, and Donna come over to Rose, Rosie's house for dinner, Donna apologizes with how, uh, uh, about how she was acting earlier at the lab, and all is forgiven. Um, the next day, though, once that comes, uh, uh, Rosie, well, Rosie is coming into work, um, and Hornstock is there, um, with a vegan burrito, um, or vegan breakfast burrito, um, and he tells Rosie that he knows Rosie is sick, 
because you picked up on what he was doing lately, like with helping Mitchie get out in the field and um, uh, getting his affairs in order and all that stuff. So, um, and he just wanted to show support. Rosie then tells him he appreciates it, but to tone it down because he's getting pretty obvious about it. Um, Hornsock then asks if Rosie has told his family. Rosie's like, no. Um, and they, they, you know, they, they're talking about this. Um, uh, in the, um, they're talking about it and, um, well, these kind of so kind of start off in uh, in front of the lab, and they, they they gradually make the way to inside. Um, and when Hornstock leaves, the the camera pans down to under the stairs, and we see Donna has heard at least a portion of it, if not everything. Um, so I'm not so I, I originally thought that Donna heard everything and knew that. Rosie was sick, but now that I think about it, she only heard, uh, the second half, I guess? I mean, I don't think that he, I don't think either one mentioned Rosie being sick once they got inside, or, or said the word sick once Rosie got inside, or they both got inside, um, so, she could, I mean, she, she knows something's up with Rosie at the very least, but she doesn't know what, so she, I, I mean, so this is gonna go. One, well, by the way, that's uh, the last scene of the whole episode. So this is gonna go the whole um, Donna hearing uh, what uh, they were talking about. It's gonna go one or two ways. Either she's gonna confront Rosie and Rosie's gonna deny it, and then she's gonna then she's gonna start acting cold towards him or she's gonna start acting cold towards him right off the bat um, until Rosie uh, tells her what's going on with him um, either that or she she's gonna still she's gonna act cold towards him and then confront him about what she knows when he doesn't tell her what's going on so it's, I guess three ways it's gonna happen so um, I was not able to see what's going on next uh, week, next week's episode, because, um, for some reason they didn't put the promo up, so I don't know what's going on in next week's episode, um, even though, um, IMDb says, or not IMDb, but, well, uh, well, Wikipedia says that the episode is gonna, there's an episode, uh, airing on the Friday, but I don't know what, um, I don't know what is going to happen because they didn't put promo up, so I don't know what's going to, ha to happen with that, <sighs> but I will still kind of make some predictions, even though only long-term predictions. One of my predictions is, well, for, first off, I want to go on a little rant, um, <laughs> I'm still upset that Rosie still hasn't said anything about his heart condition. I'm still upset about that. Because I was hoping he would say, he would tell them sooner rather than later, given everything that's going been going on recently. I was, I was thinking he was, gonna, he was going to say something because of what Tanya did and all that. But here we are, like, five episodes, I don't want to say five episodes later, that's kind of dramatic, but basically five episodes later, and he still hasn't said shit about it to anyone, um, and the only reason why he even confirmed that, uh, confirmed that he was sick was Hornstock caught him, and that's the only reason why. Um, so I'm gonna need Rosie to come clean, because if he doesn't, Donna's gonna end up being really hurt, which she has every right to be, and she's gonna just fall to face of the earth, um, to teach him a lesson about it, uh, about not saying anything, and he's gonna regret it, so, uh, I need him to say something sooner rather than later, because he's, he's gonna bite him in the damn ass sooner, like, it's gonna, he's gonna, it's gonna bite him in the ass, oh, come on, um, 
I was hoping it'd be a lot sooner than this, but <sighs> Rosie's Rosie. Um anyway, so um let's see. I predict that he's gonna end up saying something in the next two episodes, hopefully next episode, but you never know. Um let's see. I don't know um, if there's any other predictions, really. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's any really any predictions. Well, there's Tanya, and I, I think she's going to end up coming back um, by the season finale. And like I said before, she's going to be the heart transplant recipient for Rosie um, somehow, some way. I don't know, yeah, maybe it's via some accident or something, but who knows. But yeah, I think she's going to end up being his heart trans, uh, his donor, like she's going to be a donor heart or whatever, um, or something like that. Because I don't think they're just going to drop it like hot potatoes for no reason and not have, not have her be brought up so brought back so that he could have some closure and resolution on that whole, on that story storyline. So eventually she's going to have to come back, and I think, and I think she's going to end up being his heart transplant donor so uh so that's just what i think um that said i'll see you guys um next week well first actually there I'm, I'm moving soon so i don't know when when or if i will be um able to make another video I plan on making more videos, but I don't know when I'll be able to make another video, so, um, it's my plan to keep making videos, but, um, for now I'm moving, and I, I just want to make sure I'm situated before I, um, make another video, so I'll get, get another video up as soon as I can, and I'll see you guys, um, in the next video. Bye!